If you are burning down there and you don't know what to do, you have come to the right place. But let's get going. Hey everyone, I'm Dr. Jennifer Lincoln, board certified OBGYN, author and educator, and this is the health class you wish you had in high school. And today I am talking about burning down there, which can be so annoying, not the least of which because you might have been told you've got this and then that and then this and your symptoms aren't getting better or you're not feeling heard. And I'm going to break down what it could be, things to look out for, and how to go to your doctor or healthcare provider empowered and knowing what things you should be asking for. Before I get started, go ahead and subscribe, turn on the bell so you never miss an upload. Okay, so I'm saying I'm talking about burning down there, but what I'm referring to is burning of the vagina or the vulva, you know, those parts that sometimes we are like, what the heck is going on down there? And very often, what do we think or what are we told it is right away? We're told it's an infection, right? And it could be, but there is so much more to vaginal and vulvar burning than just infections. And before I talk about what these things could be, we have to talk about what we're talking about. So as you can see here, the vulva is the outside part. Sometimes we call everything down there the vagina, and that's not that's not right. The vagina is the inside part, the muscular tube. The vulva is the outside part. It includes the labia or the lips of the vagina. And you're gonna hear me use a term called vestibulitis or the vulvar vestibule, and I wanna talk about what that is here. As you can see, this is the area of skin that surrounds the opening of the vagina and also the opening of the urethra or the hole where the pee comes out. I was taught in my OBGYN residency by a vulvovaginal specialist. She called this like the one or two square inches that can absolutely ruin your life. And she was not wrong. And I think about that all the time because it's such a tiny area and so much can happen here that can really make our lives miserable. So now that we know what and where we're talking about, let's talk about what could be causing your burning. And these are the questions you should be asking yourself or somebody should be asking you because figuring it out is like solving a puzzle and there's lots of different little pieces. So number one, where is it located? And I'm like, get a mirror, take a look down there. Do not be ashamed because if you're just like, it hurts there, like you pointing with a mirror and showing us can be super helpful. So like getting really granular, is it on the outside, the inside, which side, is it all over? Is it your, your anus too? Is it more internal, vaginal? If you're not sure, that's totally okay. But just starting to think about these things can be super helpful. Number two, what else is also going on? So are you having vaginal discharge? Have you noticed any bumps or any sores? Do you see that the skin down there feels very thin and you're bleeding when you barely touch it? Do you have pain elsewhere, like in your abdomen or your belly button? And that may seem really strange, but stay tuned. I'm going to tell you why I'm asking that. Number three, what else could be new in your life? Any new medications, including birth control, any new partners, any new products like lotions or creams or douches? I mean, I hope not, but you can just see up here all these products that I can't stand that people say that you should use down there, like down there deodorant. I mean, that can cause huge issues. So have a watch and then throw those things out. But you know, any new types of clothing, any new detergents, things like that. And lastly, number four, is this totally new or acute? Or is this something that's been going on for a while? And if it's been happening, can you link it to something like after having a baby or after an injury? or after you had a hysterectomy and had your ovaries removed. So thinking about this can really start help us get narrowed down to where we think the problem might be. So here's a big overview of what can cause burning, both in the inside and the outside. Number one, yes, infections. And I'm talking about infections in the vagina, infections in the vulva, and yeah, infections in the bladder. And these can be things like a bladder infection, can also be things like a sexually transmitted infection like gonorrhea or chlamydia, or trichomoniasis, which can make a ton of discharge and that can get onto the underwear and really irritate the outside part, the vulva. And other things that are common, but something like yeast or bacterial vaginosis, and I've got some videos up here that you can refer to, but these can cause symptoms, especially if they have been going on for a long time and haven't been treated or you've been trying some other stuff like boric acid, I will, you know, boric acid has its role, but it can definitely be overused and that can lead to worsening problems. And lastly, something called disquamative inflammatory vaginitis or DIV. I'll talk more about that later. Okay, so those are common infections that can cause burning. The second thing that can cause burning down there has nothing to do with an infection, but is more of like an irritant or an allergic reaction. So it could be irritants to soaps, detergents, latex, 
spermicides, and semen. Yes, you can be allergic to your partner's semen. I will talk more about that in a moment. Number three, you can have burning from nerve issues, either nerves that are turned on, not in a good way, but feel pain when pain isn't really there, or having too many nerves. This is called neuroproliferative disorders. Number four, you could have pelvic floor muscle issues. So the pelvis is a bowl of muscles, and think if one is getting pulled, something else can get hurt somewhere else because it's all intertwined and a nerve could get pinched. And so an issue somewhere else in the pelvis can absolutely cause pain or burning in the vulva or the vagina. Number five, not having enough estrogen. So you might go right to, well, okay, so if I'm menopausal, but there's other times that this can happen too. The technical term of menopause is genitourinary syndrome of menopause. So not enough estrogen because of menopause, but you can have low estrogen for other reasons like you're breastfeeding or you're on a birth control pill, which is keeping your levels low. The sixth thing that can cause burning, injury. So an injury in childbirth, an injury on a bike or on a horse or a broken hip. And, and when we think of, especially like related to childbirth, if you fractured your tailbone, and this can actually go undiagnosed for some people. And lastly, number seven, skin disorders. So I'm talking about things like lichen sclerosis or lichen planus. Okay, so now that I've talked about all these things that could be wrong and cause burning down there, how do we get to pinpoint what's going on for you? Because that is what matters. So first things first, getting your symptoms, getting things sorted out based on the time and other things that could be going on can be really helpful to guide your healthcare practitioner's physical exam. And so I wanna hone in on some of these ones that you might not be thinking about. And let's talk about the location of things. So remember I talked about the vestibule, that tiny area that is the vaginal and the urethral opening. Knowing where your symptoms are, if they're related to this area, can be really helpful in guiding what could be going wrong, especially when it comes to disorders of nerves. There's something called provoked vestibulodynia, which is a mouthful. And it used to be called other things, just like vestibulodynia. It's also been called vulvar vestibule syndrome. It's actually not that uncommon. And it, it's kind of like what it sounds like. It's provoked or it's pain when the vestibule is touched. People describe it as not just pain, but feeling sharp, feeling like they're cut with a knife. So if they're trying to put a tampon in or have sex, they literally feel like they're being cut in half, right? Horrible. And of course, yes, it can also feel like a burning sensation or like you're feeling like you're on fire. And it can be a really overwhelming category to figure out what's going on, but I want you to think about it to differentiate it based on where it's located and what could be the cause because all the treatments are, are, are a little bit different. And no, the answer isn't just slap steroids cream on it and you'll be fine or take antibiotics and you'll be fine, which is unfortunately what a lot of us have experienced and you feel like you're not getting to the root of it. So here's how we think about based on location. So if it's that entire vestibule, here's different things that could be causing it. Number one, you could have hormonally provoked vestibulodynia, which is related to those low estrogen levels. So that's where I'll wanna know more of, have you just started a birth control pill? Are you breastfeeding? Have you gone through menopause? Did you have your ovaries removed for some reason? And that could be the cause of it. Now you might be wondering, why is a birth control pill potentially causing me to have burning in my vulva? Nobody told me about that. The reason it could happen is because the levels of hormones that your body is seeing are a lot lower when you're on a birth control pill because it's keeping things quiet in your ovary, which can be great if you're using it to treat something like painful periods or endometriosis, but not so great if now you're having vulvar burning related to it. So the treatment would be switching to something else and seeing if your vulvar symptoms get better. The second thing that can cause pain in this entire area is inflammatory. So some of those infections that I mentioned. So on exam, we'll look for signs of infections. We'll run tests for infection. And if we treat them and your symptoms get better, awesome. It could also be related to those non-inflammatory changes. So if you just started using a new spermicide, for example, you get these symptoms and then you stop it and you feel better, very good. So I mentioned being allergic to your partner's semen. And yeah, it's true. The way that you know that this could be going on is that when you have sex with your partner and they wear a condom, you're fine. But if you don't or they ejaculate inside of you, you get symptoms of like an allergic reaction. So itching, burning. The good news is that this can be treated. Just like somebody who's allergic to nuts goes to an allergist. I realize I just made that link there. Anyway, just like somebody who's allergic to peanuts may go to an allergist and get a treatment to desensitize them. The same thing can be done if you are allergic to your partner's semen. So no, if you're allergic, it does not mean that they always have to wear a condom or that you have to break up with them. Another thing that can cause pain on the whole vestibule is something called neuroproliferative disorder or too many nerves. And there's two flavors, 
congenital, which means you're born with too many nerves. And I never even heard of this until I read this book, When Sex Hurts by Dr. Jill Kreff and a bunch of other amazing people. And I will link this in the show notes. This is a phenomenal book. It's actually where I got a lot of the information for this video and I'll include it in the references. And it's not just about when sex hurts, it's when anything kind of hurts down there. I think it's super, super helpful. So in people who are born this way, they can also have pain around their belly button. 60% of them do. And that's because the same tissue that is in that vulvar vestibule area also embryologically derives from tissue around the belly button. Super cool. So for example, people who might have this have always had trouble placing a tampon because it hurt or it felt like it was burning. And when on exam, they also have pain around their belly button. A different flavor is acquired neuroproliferative disorder. So this is the nerves have been turned on. There's too many of them after something like lots of yeast infections or some sort of irritant reaction that led to this nerve overgrowth. In most people, if you have a yeast infection or you use a soap that's very irritating after you treat the infection or get rid of the thing that was causing the irritation you get better but for some people these nerves stay in a constant state of of transmitting pain and going overboard and that's how you end up with this now what if just that posterior or that bottom part of the vestibule hurts only so this area right here that can be a sign of pelvic floor muscle disorder which i mentioned before is when muscles in the pelvis are painful for different reasons maybe after childbirth or after an injury or related to other issues like endometriosis or scar tissue you can get pain or burning in this area as well this can be diagnosed on exam doing an internal exam where your healthcare provider can actually feel those muscles being really tense or tight like rubber bands or a very painful one touched directly. Okay now what if the, where you're feeling the burning and the pain is on the outside part or the vulva? This is called vulvodynia and there are different things that cause this too. One is pudendal neuralgia. This is related to the pudendal nerve transmitting pain. The classic case is somebody whose pain is getting a lot worse after they sit especially on hard surfaces or hard seats and oftentimes in that person's history they may have had a childbirth injury or trauma to the area like falling off a bike and on exam your provider can actually palpate and feel that nerve and that recreates the pain. Do you see why it's so important to not just throw one treatment at all of these? All of these different issues that can all cause burning down there have very different reasons that they're caused and it really is it's like solving a mystery to get to the right treatment. Another cause of vulvodynia or pain or burning in the vulva is something called genitopelvic dysesthesia which is a really hard word for me to say. The person who has this complains of vulvar burn Burning, but on exam, everything is totally fine. The classic history might be even just putting on underwear hurts. They may also have pain that goes around to their back as well. And third, clitorodynia or pain at the clitoris. This is folks who on exam, only their clitoris hurts. Wearing tight clothes may hurt. They may have had a prior injury history. So very important to pinpoint exactly what's hurting. And then third could be pain that is down there but has nothing to do with the vulva or the vagina itself, but instead the bladder. So something called interstitial cystitis or painful bladder syndrome is pain in the bladder and in the urethra where the pee comes out but it's not related to an active infection. People who have this may complain of burning with peeing, having to pee all the time, feeling like they can't empty their bladder fully. They may also have symptoms of constipation. They may notice that their symptoms get worse with certain things like citrus or alcohol. And on tests, they have no signs of any infection. And the last thing that I'm gonna talk about today are skin disorders that can lead to vulvar burning, or you know, burning down there, things like lichen sclerosis or lichen planus. Let's talk about lichen sclerosis first. This is a chronic autoimmune disorder. And what happens is white blood cells build up in the area of the vulva skin, and sometimes around the anus as well, and they cause tons of inflammation because of all the inflammatory chemicals that they release. Symptoms often include intense burning, intense pain, even with just touch or wiping. The skin may look very thin or crinkly, and when you touch it, it could just tear. And for some folks, when it gets so bad, the labia actually resorb a little bit and it looks stuck or it looks like the anatomy is, is all changed. And this actually leads to cancer in about 5% of patients. So it, in and of itself, lichen sclerosis is not cancer, but it can lead to it. So it's important to be monitored frequently. The treatment for this is getting the area to calm down and stop that inflammation. So often really high dose steroids for a while and sometimes things like estrogen or testosterone or dilators to try to get the anatomy back to what it used to be. And lastly, lichen planus is also a chronic inflammatory disease, but whereas lichen sclerosis is just just on the outside, lichen planus can go into the vagina. And you can actually find it in other areas like the mouth or the gums. This is a pretty tricky thing to treat. Okay, I have mentioned so many reasons for burning down there. 
I hope that this video was helpful and that you can kind of start to put together your own pieces of the puzzle. But what I really want for you is to bring what you've learned here, what you've learned about yourself to your healthcare provider so that they can do a targeted exam and talk about the different treatments. Because treatments for painful bladder syndrome are very different than treatments for lichen sclerosis or for a chronic yeast infection or for neuroproliferative disorders where medicines to help the nerves calm down a little bit may be used. This video contained a lot, but I hope it was helpful. And if you have any other questions or comments, please drop them or share your story in the comments below. Go ahead and check out my references and resources. And I really, I can't recommend this book highly enough. And I, I bought this book myself. I was not like paid to do any of this. All right, be sure to follow me on my other socials for all other kinds of content. And until next time, stay safe and stay informed. Bye-bye.